Particles can be used to simulate fire, smoke, water, and other fluid and gas effects. An emitter entity emits a stream of particles. Emitter settings can be used to display many different kinds of effects. This tutorial will explain emitter creation and rendering, various emitter settings, and will demonstrate how to combine particle emitters for more interesting effects. We're going to start with this simple program, and this is just going to create an emitter using the create emitter command, and then we're going to apply a material to it with the paint entity command, and we're going to load the material smoke.mat, and then we're going to apply that to the emitter. Now you can see the emitter entity located at the base of the, uh, the particles here is emitting a stream of particles and they're flowing up and it just keeps recycling the uh, particles and cycling indefinitely. Now there's something I want to point out here. Particles in Leadworks Engine use a vertex shader to orient the part particles so that they're facing the camera and this is much faster than processing them on the CPU so you can have a great many more particles with this engine than you might be able to with an engine that used CPU based particles but because we are using a vertex program to orient the particles it's very important that we specify a material that uses the particles.vert vertex program because if we don't, then our particle emitter won't actually look like anything at all because it will be invisible. So that's something to keep in mind. Now I want to talk about the create emitter command because it has a lot of optional parameters. If we go on the online documentation, we can see the uh, command declaration for the create emitter function here and the first property is intensity and the default value is 100 and this is the number of particles that are in the emitters particle pool an emitter has a constant number of particles and it just keeps cycling through them the second parameter is the lifetime and this is the number of milliseconds that a particles life will last and the default value is 1000 so that means by default a particle will last for one second before it gets recycled. The next parameter is the velocity for the emitted particles and by default this is uh, the particles just go upwards at one unit per second and then finally you have the uh, parent parameter and if this specifies an entity then the emitter will be created as a child of that entity. So just by changing a few parameters around in this create emitter function I can change the appearance of an emitter. Here I'm only going to use an intensity of 20 so there will only be 20 particles in this emitter. The lifetime will be 8000 so they'll last for quite a bit longer and instead of going up I'm going to make it go uh, to the right. So you can see the particles are spread out pretty far and they're moving slowly to the right now. It doesn't look very good but that's the point of this is to show you what the different properties do. Of course we have lots of other parameters that can be adjusted after we create the emitter. The first one I want to show you is the emitter radius. If we use the set emitter radius command then we can specify a beginning radius and an ending radius and here we see the beginning radius is zero and the ending radius is one so we would expect the particles to start out uh, just being so small they can't be seen and then they'll grow and grow and when they reach the end of their life they'll be they'll have a radius of one and here you can see what that looks like. The particles at the bottom that are just emitted are very small and then they grow until they get to the end of their life. 
We can also adjust a waiver setting for the emitter, and this is a range from which a random number is picked and added to each particle's velocity each frame. So if I use this set emitter waiver value, and I'm just going to set this to 2.0, then we should see some more ran randomness in the particle stream. And you can see this randomness gives a much more natural looking effect. We can add acceleration to an emitter, and we're going to do that with the set emitter acceleration value. And this will just make the particle velocity start to move in the direction of the acceleration. And here the acceleration is going to be a vector pointing down. And since the original velocity is pointing up, we should see particles shoot up and then get ba dragged back down by gravity. So you can see how this could be used to make a nice fountain effect. You could also use it for wind effects or maybe something else. We can also adjust an emitter's velocity on the fly. And if we use the set emitter velocity command, then this will determine the velocity of particles as they are emitted. It won't affect particles that have already been emitted, but as they come to the end of their life and get reset, then they'll use whatever the current velocity setting is. So here I'm just, I have this angle value and I'm incrementing that every frame, and then I'm using the cosine and the sine as the velocity. So what we should see is a particle emitter spinning in a circle. So here you can see the particle velocity is changing uh, with time, so it looks like the emitter is turning around in a circle. We can make particles rotate using the set emitter rotation speed command. And here I'm setting it to 0 0.5, and this will just make all the particles rotate, and it will alternate directions for each particle, so every other particle will be turning in an opposite direction. And this just adds a little bit more randomness and makes it a little bit harder to pick out every single individual particle. Of course, we don't always want particles to emit from a single point. So we can use the set emitter area to make particles emit from an area around the emitter. And here I'm setting it to a, uh, a vector that's too wide and zero high and too deep. So it's basically emitting from a flat square area. So you can see the particles are coming, aren't just coming from one spot, there's a whole cloud of them. And you can use this for cloud effects or fire or other particle emitters where you don't want them all just coming from a single point. 